is waiting to talk to you. Bonnie Shea? Bonnie Shea. Oh. And her partner is a special guest, an old friend of yours, uh, the former manager of the Milwaukee Braves, Mr. Fred Haney. Oh, so you well, well. Welcome to you, Batsomai. Uh, Welcome to you, Batsomai. Freddie, I'm glad to see you, as uh, Phil Silvers would put it. Thank glad you, to, Glad to see you. This is the man who made Milwaukee famous, you know. He also made Milwaukee come in second last year in the <laughs> National League. <laughs> what was it paid? No. Second? You no, nosed out Frisco, right? Yeah, we nosed them out. Now tell me, in one simple sentence, who's going to win the pennant this coming year? I don't know. <laughs> That's only a simple sentence, all right. <laughs> Fred, who was the greatest ball player you ever knew? Oh, Cyrus so. Raymond Cobb. Yeah, I go along with that, too. I always have arguments with Harry Ruby about that. He always says Ruth. Well, of course, there were two different personalities completely. <laughs> now, who was the greatest manager? Well, Groucho, I'll have to say Ty Cobb. Oh, Freddie, look at the record of McCarthy with the Yankees, and You're... Stengel with the Yankees, and John McGraw with the Giants. I don't think you can go on a record in... That's all you have to in baseball, Fred. You've got to no, go by no, the way. No, you can't either. You sound like an umpire right now. <laughs> And you going, sound like the Rocha. If I was going on records, I'd have to say Stengel. But uh, how many years did Stengel manage where he didn't get uh, any place from a managerial That's standpoint? That's true. But did Cobb ever win any pennants? No, but I happened to be with the club all the time Ty managed. And Maybe I, that's why they didn't and, win any uh, pennants. Uh, with the horses that he had to go with, I think he did the, one of the most marvelous jobs in having us finish second a couple of years. Oh, he only had and Crawford and Beach in the outfield. No, no, so. they were gone when he was yeah. managing. They had left. We had a bunch of youngsters up there at that time, and I think he uh, has forgotten more baseball than the majority of managers ever knew. Now I give. Oh, I like Cobb because he watches my show every week. He told me. <laughs> uh, I have another question the fans might like to have answered, assuming that there is any out there. What's all this noise about another major league? Do you think there's much chance of it happening? Well, Grout show from the. Uh, the basis of uh, organizing a league, they couldn't get a better man than Branch Rickey. If the league starts on a solid foundation, I think it'll be a big success. I think it'll be a tremendous help to baseball. I think it would be, too. I think a lot more kids would take up baseball if they knew there was an opportunity for them in another league. Uh, Bonnie Shea, is, uh, that's you. Uh, what is your middle name, Bonnie? Is it one horse Shea? No, I'm a Two horse No. Is it two Shea? <laughs> Are you married, Bonnie? No, I'm not. Oh, good. Do you have a job? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, uh, I'm a second grade school teacher. You're a second grade school teacher? Mm -hmm. What's a second grade school teacher? One grade. that doesn't teach? Huh? Grade. Oh, you're a grade, grade school two. teacher, huh? Yes. Grade two? Uh, grade two. This country's educational curve has just taken a sharp turn for the better. <laughs> I never had girls like that when I went to school. Did you, for teachers? You just probably can't remember back that far. <laughs> He's in a nice, kindly mood tonight. <laughs> what sort of things do you teach? Baseball? No, that comes a little bit later. Oh, what do you mostly teaching? we teach reading, uh, printing, lots printing, of Printing? You mean counterfeit money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other, other kind. Um, singing, art, music, rhythms. Mm -hmm. Rhythm? You teach him singing rhythm? Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is singing uh, rhythm? Could you... Uh... For instance, would you like to be uh, one of the little pupils with me? Do you want me to roll up my trousers? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you teach them rhythm? I mean, so they can eventually wind up as uh, beatniks. Well, uh, usually we go into the auditorium and I play records for them. And uh, they do anything that's creative to them. They listen to music and... Uh, then they do some kind of motion. Usually they pretend they're animals or something like that. And Don't you think all men are beasts? <laughs> Not all of them. Well, a good many of them? Some of them. Yeah. Look at the way Fred is eyeing you right now. <laughs> uh, for instance, um, uh, a record like Peter Cottontail. I would play Peter Cottontail on the record player, and uh, then the children would all pretend they were little bunnies uh, hopping uh -huh. down the bunny trail. Uh -huh. Sounds pretty like revolting that? so far. Huh? <laughs> How does that one go about the bunny tail? <laughs> hmm? um, here comes Peter Cottontail, and uh, I need some music, though. Have you got any bunny music over there? <laughs> yeah, could you lay a few eggs while you're <laughs> playing? <laughs> Come on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Listen to Amy Hot 
throw the bunny. Oh, no, we have to put our little paws up like this. <laughs> Fluff up our little tail. <laughs> and when the music starts, we start hopping down a bunny trail. <laughs> All right. Ready? Ready. Start hopping. <laughs> Find a way to make a living, a man of my age. <laughs> Not even second childhood, third childhood. <laughs> Fred, I understand you're going into the you've gone into the banking business. Is this true? That's right, Gracio. Oh. I'm interested in the in Studio money, City huh? Bank. Huh? What bank is it? Studio we City. We don't mind giving you the <laughs> I imagine banking must be a fascinating subject, uh, for example. I notice that money costs have been climbing steadily recently. Now, what do you think of the government fiduciary policies? Uh, well, we have men to take care of that. As a vice president, I don't worry about small details. <laughs> What, what, are you, what are you duties there? Are you a policeman in the bank? <laughs> you crack the safe at night? No, we stay and count the money. <laughs> you said nothing. Oh, how do you like that for a bunny tail, huh? There's 50 bucks for you, and there's 50 for you. Because he said uh, something about robbing a bank. Come back later, Fred, huh? Not too often, huh? Wow. Well, it's been fun talking to you, Fred, and nice to see you again. You're going to do a lot of uh, broadcasting this year, aren't you? Yes, this year I'm going to broadcast the NBC Game of the Week. He's probably the best broadcaster in the whole game. Well, let's see how you can do in the seventh inning stretch here, especially Bonnie. Uh, uh, Mr. Fenneman. Would you bring in the questions? You met Fenneman, mm -hmm. huh? Yes, indeed. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice Glad to see you. see you. Well, what category have they chosen? Uh, uh, cities and small towns of the United States, right? One, two, and three. Two. Start with two? Mm-hmm. For $200, in what state are Moundsville, Ripley, and Charleston? You can talk it over. <clears throat> West Virginia. You said it, kid. You now have $200 and three <clears throat> more chances to make five. Another two? Well, for two hundred dollars, in what state are Owensboro, Covington, and Lexington? K Kentucky. Kentucky is right. I know. I used to have a girl in Covington. You now have four hundred dollars and two more chances to make five. Now this one's for three hundred. For three hundred dollars, in what state are uh, Brunswick, Kennebunk? And Lewiston. Lewiston. In Maine. That, that's right. That's, uh, Kennebunk is where Booth Tarkington used to live. We all have all kinds of useless information here. $700 and another question, so... Uh, oh, boy. You're in the gravy now. Hey, Fred, you may not have to work at all this year. <laughs> another $300 one. For $300, in what state are Emporia, Hutchinson, and Manhattan? Kansas. Precisely right. Well, you wound up with one thousand dollars, which means we'll see, see you, you later, later Fred. Huh? Thanks. Try for the big one. See you later. Thank you very much. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. I'd like to have you meet Marie Gomez and her partner, a very special guest, is one of the most familiar personalities on television, Mr. Dawes Butler. So folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your betcha life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred bucks. Marie Butler and uh, Dave, uh, Dave Gomez. That's your name? <laughs> well, that's close. No, uh, Doss Butler is mine. Do uh, oh, you're Marie Gomez. Marie Gomez. Gomez. Yes. Uh, you why do you pronounce it Gomez? Why not Gomez? Gomez is the Spanish name. Oh, are you Spanish? I'm Spanish oh. and French. Oh, I thought you were Irish. Fenneman <laughs> uh, says you're one of the most familiar personalities on TV. Uh, now, I watch television a lot. And I don't recognize you. Why is that? Are you an animal of some kind? <laughs> well, nobody's ever seen me on television. Oh, well, maybe if you'd stand on an apple box, the more people <laughs> would see you. <laughs> Why haven't I seen you on TV? Are you on some uh, local channel? Or? Well, I'm actually a voice, Groucho. Oh, the voice. The voice of experience? <laughs> My name is you Huckleberry Hound. What? Huckleberry Hound. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
That's one of my favorite shows, Huckleberry Hound. Uh, well, you God know, bless it's you. A funny, yes, it is, too. You know, every time, every time that show is on, I have a terrible fight with my daughter, Melinda, because she wants to watch Meet the Press, and I want to watch <laughs> Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> we only have one set in the house, and that's usually broken. <laughs> uh, you're a sort of a... You, you do dogs and uh, other animals, too. Well, uh, you can call me a dog. Well, Only all right, you, you're, you're a dog. Huh? Okay. And I also, uh, I'm a bear. I'm Yogi Bear. Oh. And I'm a cat. Uh, Mr. Jinx is the name, and uh, I like to chase those miserable meeses, you know. <laughs> and I'm also a meese. My name is Dixie, and I'm on the miserable meeses he chases. <laughs> He's a one-man zoo here. <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I am. Do mm -hmm. uh, you ever use any of these voices at home? <laughs> well, only in South Aren't you allowed to talk in the house at all? No, only bark. Uh -huh. And I have my little bed where they put me. I uh, can't get on the couch. <laughs> You're, uh, oh, we went through that. Marie Gomez. Marie Gomez. Marie Gomez. Uh, Marie Gomez. Did I want that? Is that the... <laughs> Marie, you're quite a dish, uh, Marie. And since I'm the head chef around here, uh, let's start cooking, huh? Let's start what? Cooking? Let's start the uh, cooking. Cooking, what that mean? Uh, well, he'll explain it to you later uh, when, he's a, <laughs> when he's a dog. Uh, where are you from, uh, Marie? I'm from uh, 16 you... arrondissement Champs-Élysées, Paris, France. You're from uh, Paris, eh? Yeah? Oh, Have you always lived in, in Paris? Oh, no. My family is uh, in diplomacy service. Oh. I was in Mexico, and in Guatemala, Santo Domingo, and Haiti. Well, chilly today and hot tamale, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Could you give her a, a real Huckleberry welcome, uh, Dawes? Well, let's see. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe somebody like Baba Louie would be better, little Baba Louie. Uh, I want to welcome you to the United States, and I want you to meet a very good friend of mine. The passage is gone in the West. Quick draw, McGraw. Oh, thank you, Bobo Louie. And I will save her from the villains. And don't you forget it. <laughs> Marie, this fellow's got a lot on the ball. Yeah, I can Almost see. as much as you have. <laughs> I mean, in a different way, of course. <laughs> so what do you really think of American men? Oh, I think so. If they're not so fast, they're going to be the best men in the world. You mean if you could nail one? <laughs> no, but... What do you mean, too fast? You mean you, you're chasing them? Yes, but... Uh... What's, what's been your experience with fast American men? Oh, I remember in New York City, an uh, American man from Texas invited me to go out for dinner. He what? He invited me out for dinner, eat dinner. You, you were in New York and he wanted to take you to dinner? Yes. In, in Texas? No, that is the problem. I, he would, he want to take me to dinner, not in New York. He want to take me in Chicago for dinner. <laughs> Some very good meat in Chicago. <laughs> That's where the stockyards is. If you're so critical of the American male, why would you be willing to marry one? Oh, I think so. They are very handsome. Mm. More than they drive this big American car. Uh, they, are, they spoil the woman very much in this country. When they put the woman name in the check, the, woman, the, the wife can go any time they want in the bank to cash the check. Oh, you mean they have a, a double account at the bank, huh? They have it, yes. The woman can go every time he wants. She wants to. She, she, yeah, but she take the check, you know. Don't she they have the to have money in the bank? Uh? Yes, they have money, too. Oh. <laughs> I'm and sure. How long have you been over here, Marie? I am going to have one year in United States. Uh -huh. And you've caught on pretty well. You want a big car and a double bank account. You know? <laughs> Well, it's been fun talking to you two. Now, let's see how much you can win in the quiz. Are you interested in winning any money, Marie? Oh, yes, From I want From your previous to. conversation, I would imagine you have only an academic oh. interest in money. I like to. You, you like Mr. Fenneman? Have you ever seen Mr. Fenneman? No. You no. Know, well, he's a kind of an unknown soldier. George, uh, would you mind coming out here and bring the question box? She says she's never heard of you, George. Now, do you recognize him? Yes, now, yes. Yeah, how do you... What do you think of them? Oh, um, I can't give my opinion now. <laughs> well, that's good enough for me. Huh? <laughs>
Now, what ca category have they chosen there, uh, George? I've uh, forgotten. Uh, <laughs> well, forget her and remember the category, would you? Uh, movie quiz, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Came back. You know how to play the game? Uh, we know, I think. Know. Marie, you pick the, the first question. They're one, two, and three hundreds. I pick the one first, okay? Mm -hmm. The one hundred. The one hundred? Yeah. I give to you. Oui. You give to me. Yeah. And then I give to him. For one hundred dollars, James Mason and Pat Boone star in a Jules Verne story. What is the title of the movie? John, Johnny to the stump of the hair. I say Johnny. Johnny to the center of the hair. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's and you now have one hundred dollars and three more chances to make five. Now is it my turn? It's anybody's turn. You oh, know, uh, this is I, Liberty Hall. Yes, take it. So I take the 200? Typical woman. She wants to <laughs> put the responsibility on you. Mm -hmm. You take the 200. For 200, uh, Charles Heston plays Ben-Hur in the current production. Who created the role in the previous movie? Uh, Charlton Heston plays it in the current one. Who played it in the previous one? Raymond Navarro? Raymond Navarro. Oh. Well, you now have uh, three hundred dollars and two more chances to make five. Okay, you want to take a two hundred or one hundred? I take the three hundred. Three hundred? No. Oh, take if it, she wants to. Three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, it? that's all right. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we got a system. Why don't you read it and I'll answer it? <laughs> well, for three hundred bucks, who is the male star of Room at the Top? Hmm. Mm. You can talk to each other, you know. I can talk with him? Oh, oui. You want to help him? Yes, come. <laughs> <laughs> well, the time's I up. Think it's, it is Lawrence Ravi. Oh, yeah. Lawrence Ravi? Yeah, Lawrence Ravi. Oh. Uh, no, well, you're... Well, you know, you still have $300 and one more chance to make five, a total of five. Well, now you better take the two, huh? Yeah, I would say you're, <laughs> you're thinking straight there, yes. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> For two hundred dollars in the movie Porgy and Bess, who plays the part of Sport in Life? Uh, Sammy Davis. That's, yeah. that's all right. I'm going to wind up with five hundred dollars, so you'll have a chance later on in the show for two, five, or ten thousand dollars. Congratulations. We will see you later. Au revoir. We'll have two couples to try for the big money tonight. Now, here's the first big question. Who's going to answer it? Uh, Bonnie uh, Shea and Fred Haney earned $1,000 $1, in the quiz, so they get a chance at it. So here they are. Oh, I was a little school teacher. <laughs> well, is that crooked banker again. <laughs> uh, you understand this game, uh, Fred? I think so. Oh, better than you do baseball? Now, you pick a number from 1 to 10 for $10,000. You picked first. No, no. I finished oh, second. All right, all right. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. Right? Um, you can't forget that. Right? No. <laughs> well, I was rooting for you, anyhow. I'll What'd you pick? I'll uh, pick number five. Isn't she cute, Fred? Very much so. Yeah. If you weren't a banker, could you go for a guy like that? <laughs> well, I've, I've got a very cute one at home, Groucho. Oh. <laughs> well, assume that you didn't have one at home. <laughs> now, would you pick a number for $5,000? Uh, eight. Eight. Five and eight. Now, one of you give this a spin. If any other number comes up, this question is worth a total of two grand. Well, you had eight and five, and it came up three, so here we go for a total of two grand. In 1953, a woman was appointed treasurer of the United States for a total of two thousand dollars. Tell me the name of this woman whose signature appears on all currency printed from 1953 through 1960. That ought to be pretty easy. <laughs> Take a guess. Pull a name out of uh, nowhere. <laughs> I know it's not. Well, there it is. So. It's Ivy, <laughs> Ivy Baker Priest. Oh. You wouldn't think they trust a woman with all that money, would you? I'm sorry you missed it, but you won. Uh, how much did they win? 
It was thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? Well, that's not too bad. You've had better nights, but uh, <laughs> better luck next time, thank Fred. You, I'll be Appreciate seeing you on TV. Fine, thank yeah. you. Goodbye, Teach. Well, Marie Gomez and Dawes Butler won $500, so they get a chance at the big money. So would you come out, folks, please? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh. You're flattered when people whistle at you, huh? Uh, I'm a woman. Yeah. Well, a, a dog is whistled at. They're not flattered. Huh? <laughs> okay, you're going to pick a number now for a total of $10,000. I take the one. Isn't you take the one. Well, that's fine. And we don't have to change it. What number do you take? I'll take six. Uh, that's for $5,000. Now, if any other number but uh, these two turns up, this question is worth a total of uh, $2,000. Mm -hmm. Clear? Okay. Give it a spin. were six and one, and it landed on one, so this question is for $10,000. No help, if we hear any sound, we have to throw it out. There's a lot of money. We haven't got that much money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a decidedly unpopular piece of legislation was the act which gave the government the power to enforce prohibition. For a total of 10 grand, what was the name of this act which enforced the 18th Amendment? <laughs> What is the answer you have decided upon? Uh, the Volstead Act. The Volstead Act is right. <laughs> See, it's not so bad being a dog after all. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, but now I'm a dog, eh? Yeah? Well, you were a total of $10,000. Uh, what do you plan on doing with your share of the swag? Well, I have uh, four boys, so I'll set aside four uh, trust funds for college uh, uh -huh. to help the boys oh, along in that. Couldn't do uh... <laughs> And uh, Marie, what are you going to do with your money? I want to be like an American woman, have my bank uh, account, too. Yeah, the bank account. Uh, uh, yes. Bank account, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm glad you won the money, uh, even though you won't get it. <laughs> I won't get it? Oh, you'll get it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> tomorrow I start going to work. Congratulations, <laughs> and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Remember, folks, we will lost $10,000 here tonight. When you go in to buy any of our products, tell them Grouch.